Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our live cover creation. I'm really excited because we are now doing weekly live book cover creations and fine art photography pieces. So we start off by creating a fine art composite photography piece, and then we turn it into a book cover with a fake title, a fake author name, a fake tagline, a fake write-up. Uh, it's really fun. We've done this a couple of times, and we have audience input as we are doing things. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Let me tell you just a little bit about how this works. Now, over on the right side of the screen, you will see a chat box. Go ahead and talk to me at any point throughout the course of this broadcast. I will be checking out what you guys are saying. You can talk to each other. You can give me suggestions. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to ask which images I should use and what storyline we should be creating. And you guys get to help me decide what we are doing. So go ahead, chat at any point. If you've got a question, like a, a question that you need answered, there's a red question mark tab. Go ahead and hit that so that I know it's a question as opposed to just conversation. So thank you so much for showing up. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, hello, Kimmy. Hi to Debbie. I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, and thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. So let me know what you guys are thinking. Today we are creating a fantasy scape uh, book cover, an image, which I'm really excited about. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I haven't done yet. And I have not worked out any of the details. <laughs> so we are figuring this out live on air together. It's going to be fun. Um, but I, I am foreseeing one very specific thing that I want to work on. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. We're going to create a storyline as we go. So be thinking of title names, of taglines, and of uh, different things that we can use within this book cover as we are creating it. Now, real quick, just to let you guys know, because I am uh, chatting with some photographers here as well, we are going to be talking a little bit um, more in-depth Photoshop. So I, I will be using some terms that some of you may not use if you are not photographers or Photoshop people. It's okay. Just run with me here. I am using a Wacom Intuos Pro editing tablet so that I can edit today because I do not edit with my trackpad and mouse. Uh, that's just way too difficult. So when you see this, this is just my editing pen. All right, let's dive in. Thank you guys again for hanging out with me. Here we go. We're going to create a fantasy scape. So I'm going to switch over and screen share. You're going to be able to see everything in Photoshop as I'm doing it. I will do my best to explain to you I will not be able to see what you guys are saying as we are live. So, well, no, I will. But as I'm working in Photoshop, it's go going to be in front of the screen. So I will be pausing periodically to check the chat box. So um, if it takes me a minute or two to answer your questions, it's just because I haven't seen them yet. It's behind my Photoshop screen. So let me pull up my screen share. And we will go ahead and share. I'm thinking of putting this model in there and we'll do some tweaking. I'm thinking of adding um, maybe a little bit of a steampunkish twist to it, but we shall see how it goes. And I think I'm going to start off with this background because I kind of like how that is working for me. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is first grab my model here. And I am just going to use my selection tool and just kind of mask my model here. And then I'm going to put a layer mask over it. So at that point, we've more or less roughly cut out the model. And I'm going to kind of tweak where she is sitting and standing. So I kind of want to make it. Let me see. Where do I want to put her? I'm almost thinking I'm going to have to do a little bit of resizing here. Because I, I honestly, I want her right there. But that is not going to work for my book cover. So let's create the image first, and then we'll worry about the book cover later. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. And I'm going to clean up some of these lines. Because I just did a rough outline of this. And I definitely need to make this better. So I am... On my layer mask there, I've got a soft brush. I'm going to take my opacity all the way up. And I am on a black brush to brush this off. And I'm just going to kind of clean up some of these edges just a little bit. I am going to be doing some stuff to this image. So I'm not looking for super, super clean lines yet, just at this precise moment. 
because we are going to be changing some things and I'm going to fine tune it a little bit later. But I definitely want some of these weird little lines to not be there. So we're just going to clean that up just a touch and get some, rid of some of those leaves in the background from that other image. So tell me guys in the chat box as we are working on this, what do you want to see in this fantasy scape? I personally am seeing floating islands. And that is something that I've wanted to work on. I've actually wanted to do that for a while now. And I'm going to be trying that today, I think. But what other kind of elements should we be adding to this? Now, I am not keeping all of this water. I'm not going to keep that sky. We are going to change that up. But I wanted the really cool wave pattern around her feet because I thought that was pretty cool. Now, the nice thing about this skirt is that it has a lot of motion in it. And so I will be changing that up later. I'm not going to worry about that now. But I am going to get rid of the rest of the grass that kind of got stuck. Oops. There we go. It paused for just a second. Sometimes Photoshop needs to think or your computer needs to think. And it just takes a second to catch up to itself, especially when you are live broadcasting as you are doing it. So I'm just going to glance around and make sure I didn't miss anything major. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. So if you look at the corner of this skirt here. It is in motion and is blurred a little bit, but you can still see some of that green. So I'm just tapping it on a high brush with a 100% opacity just to get rid of some of that green. And then we'll come in there and we'll deal with that later. So I'm going to pause and just check out. Jess is here. Floating islands sound awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be really cool. All right. So let me zoom back out. And I really love, I don't think you can see my mouse. I'm, I'm showing things with my mouse. I really love that swirly pattern around her feet. Obviously, she looks like she's Photoshopped right now. And we're going to have to ground her a little bit. But we're going to come back to that in just a minute. The next thing I want to do is decide maybe what I'm going to do for my floating islands. And then I'm going to go in there and I'm going to handle the sky. So let me show you what I'm doing for my floating island. I actually have an image here. There it is. I'm going to drag and drop this right on top here so that you can kind of check that out. This is like an anthill type thing. And I am going to be cutting this out and flipping it upside down and turning this into my floating island. So let's kind of take a look at what I'm doing here. I have got my selection tool and I am just kind of running over this. And my computer's really slow because I'm live broadcasting at the same time. So bear with me for a moment while we get the marching ants going around. Which is kind of funny because it's an ant hill. Um, and I'm just kind of selecting all the area that I want to mask in my image. And my computer is thinking. There we go. Almost there. And we're just going to call that close enough. All right. Oops, I missed a little bit up at the top. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to mask this. Boom, check that out. Well, actually, that's kind of almost kind of cool there. Oh, I might have to rethink that. Uh, so we're going to leave that like that. And obviously, I need to clean this up a little bit. So let me grab my black brush. I'm going really small on that high opacity because I want a really clean line here. And I am just getting rid of some of that grass. Yeah. We're going to get rid of some of the grass here. And it doesn't have to be like exact because we are going to be going in and changing it. Obviously, I missed a little bit of it with my selection tool. So I can actually switch over to my white brush. If you hit the X button on your keyboard, that'll switch over your brushes for you. Uh, and there. There we go. So that's a little bit more of a clean line. And at this point, I want to flip this over and then I'll finish adjusting this. So I am going to go down to transform and rotate it 180 degrees. Ooh, dang it, that looks cool too. Dude, there's so much we can do here. I'm gonna make this smaller. And let's just see how this goes. Let's just see if this is gonna work for us. Um, 
Yeah, in theory, something like that could work. I am uh, checking my chat box here. Feel free to talk to me throughout the whole process because it gets a little lonely on this side, especially if I don't know if you're talking to me. Um, I am going to start shaping my island just a little bit. And I actually, I almost wonder if I don't want to use this one. Let me try a second type of mountain. Let me look for that picture. Oh, here it is. That was way easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> So I grabbed this from uh, Pixabay. So if you are looking for something like this, you can grab that from there. I don't do mountains, so sometimes I just kind of gotta work what I can find from other photographers. And this is a um, royalty-free site that I occasionally use when I don't have access to things like a particular type of bird or mountain or something like that. And so I'm just grabbing bits and pieces of it. Oh, I think I'm going to have to fix that. We'll see. And I'm going to mask that to hide it. There we go. Yes, I think that's going to work a little bit better for me. So let me zoom back out. And I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. And now we're talking. Okay. Now remember, this is not going to be the same sky or background that I'm going to be using. So actually, let me take a look at my background because I need to do a little bit of fixing here. This is not how I want to leave this. And oh, this is what I wanted to point out. Let me show you something real quick. With this, guys, there is a horizon line. And we're going to use pink to show this off. Right here is my horizon line. If we're looking at stuff above it, we're only going to see the underside. We're not going to see the top. If I'm looking at stuff below, we're only going to see the top of things, not the underside. Just a little pro tip there. All right. Let me see. Where did that one go? I almost a little bit want to see if that's going to work for me. And I feel like it's not, but <laughs> I want to try one particular image. You like that one better, too. Yeah, I like that one better, too. Although I did like the uh, kind of stalactite look that the other one had. Let me see. There was there was a skyline that I have that I shot. Gosh, which one do I want to use? Not that one. I have right now, you can't see it, but I have this folder of images that I pulled specifically for this cover. And there's probably like 300 images in here that I'm like, maybe this will work. Oh, and maybe this will help. And maybe this could be cool. Let's find out. So I've got a whole bunch of things here that I can potentially work with. Um, and nope, I'm not going to out of that. Okay, go back down. Let me do, this is what I was thinking of. I could potentially use this one. This is... Along the lines, this is actually taken at a beach. Woohoo. Uh, <laughs> this is taken at a beach. So it's kind of along the same lines as the other one. Let me just mask that for myself. And then I want to bring that to... Let me see. Right about... There, more or less, and, oops, nope, didn't want to do that. Okay. So then I'm going to take a soft brush, and I'm going to make it nice and big, and just run it along the edge, that bottom edge there of that image, to kind of get rid of that line. So you see how that disappeared and almost looks a little hazy-like? Cool, right? That's what we're looking for. Boom. Check that out. So then I want to find my mountain and bring that back up here. There we go. Hey, guys, this is turning out to be pretty cool. I need a little bit of a horizon line that I want to work on there because I don't necessarily want to leave all of that water there. Because this, this was not an ocean-y picture that I was looking for. Ooh, 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 that could be cool. Definitely just saw like a sunset pink cloud thing that I'm considering tossing in there at some point. All right, I am looking through. Where is that horizon line I was looking for? I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I grabbed like a hundred 
different beach pictures because I thought the sky is so cool. It's going to be awesome. But now I have to deal with it and search through things to find things. Um, okay, so I've got some trees. That could be a thing. And I've got, where did that go? Uh, Jess says it's amazing what you can do with all those tools. Girl, you have not seen even the beginning of the amazingness that Photoshop holds. Like, it's crazy what you can, okay, here we go. I found it. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just going to try this because I, and I feel like this is going to be a major flop, but this is what we do. So check that out. I got these gorgeous um, mountains, like this mountainy range here. And I want to bring that down. So maybe I don't want that. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. This could be interesting. Let's find out how interesting it is. We're going to start brushing off. As if this were kind of like a ledge. And I'm going to lower my opacity and I'm going to use a white brush and paint that back on right along that water edge. As if this were an actual ledge, which is pretty cool. So I'm just low opacity painting that back on. And just covering that up just a little bit. So far, so interesting, yeah. So we are just painting that on a little bit, and then we're going to deal with some color toning. Because obviously we've got some different color toning going on, so we're going to have to handle that, but not just yet. So I want to do a little retouching. I'm grabbing my uh, spot healer. It's mad at me because I have to rasterize this. Whatever. There we go. And I'm just going to clean up some of the stuff with that mountain range there. Because I don't want to see all of those roads and things. So we're just kind of touching it up. I, I know you guys really can't see my mouse here, so you're probably just seeing those little black blobs. That is my spot healer. And that just picks up elements from the things around it and just kind of clones it over in a fun little way. Okay, that's a little bit better. Yeah, I hear ya. <laughs> I'm getting warnings. It's all good. Very interesting. Pretty mountain, she says. Yeah. Um, checking in here. Let me see. Oh, so we've got Jess and Yentl here. Hey, guys. Thanks for hanging. Um, go ahead and chat with me in the chat box. You know what to do. So, here we go. We are going to be playing with this just a little bit now. And at this point, I need to handle that mountain, that nice little island, the floating island there. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and bring this. Oh, yep. Then I want to play with that a little bit. Okay. Let me go back just a touch so I can see the whole thing. There we go. All right. So now I need to find my layer with my mountain on it. And I'm going to click on the layer mask. Now, the cool thing about layer masks is that you can change things without it being destructive. So check this out. I have a large soft brush and I'm just going to, uh, nope, my lesson failed because I have my opacity low. I'm just, no, yikes. Okay, there we go. And so I'm just going to start erasing this. Oh, but look at that. I can actually pull it all back because it's on a non-destructive layer mask. So if I did that and erased the actual image, that would be gone. But because I'm on a layer mask, my life just got a lot easier. So I'm going to start sculpting this, and I'm going to take away the bits and pieces that I don't like, that didn't quite line up the way I wanted them to. I'm going to really sculpt my mountain in here. And so I'm taking away some of that outside edge. I make sure that I don't have any extra stuff floating around. Sometimes when you're working in like really little places, it gets a little hard to kind of see what you're doing. So got some space over here that kind of went away on me and I don't want it to go away so I'm going to build it back in and then I'm going to sculpt it back out because again we don't want it to be super super 
straight and weird like that. Now, if you look at the top here, this top line should definitely not be super straight because we are looking at the top of a mountain. So I just duplicated that because I want to play with this a little bit. And what I'm doing is just going in with a small, very small, soft brush. And I'm just kind of going up and down a little bit to create a slightly jagged edge. So do you see how it's adding that depth and detail there so that it is not super straight and looks like we just cut it out in Photoshop? So I'm not doing it all at the same time. I'm doing it in little pieces. And I'm just kind of going up and down so that nothing is perfectly horizontal because that is unrealistic. And our goal here is definitely to make this a little more realistic because people have to believe whatever world we're creating. So I create these worlds all the time, things that don't actually exist. But if people didn't believe that it was legit, I would be an epic failure. And that would be bad. So I actually have to go through the full extent of making sure it's believable and create something that would be real world if it actually existed. And so that means depth perception. That means blurring things. That means having those jagged edges. It means all sorts of really fun things. Okay, so I made it a little less straight, but I'm not done yet because that is not the only thing that we would be seeing on some kind of floating island. So now I'm going through my images because that is what I need to do. <laughs> I got to scroll through all these and look for the one that I pulled. Uh, there we go. Okay, so here we go. I'm grabbing, this is actually, I got to reduce my size here. Let me pull back a touch. I have a little bit of a castle on top of this mountain, and I do not want the whole thing. So I'm going to put it relatively where I want it. And then I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I'm going to select this. So I'm going to use my selection tool. I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. The more small that you make your selection tool, the more refined your selection is going to be. And so that means it's going to be more specific and it's going to work a lot better for you. Yeah, I might grab that too. I was just going to grab the little castle part, but I think I'm going to grab some of the trees as well. There we go. All right, let me mask this out. Boom, baby, boom. Check that out. So now I have to redefine my size. This is not the size I want to leave it at. And this would be something that we see up on top of this mountain, but... I obviously have to go in and do some refining. So let me grab that brush again. I am still on a soft brush. And I am, oops, going to do it a little bit smaller. Because again, the smaller the tool that you use, the more refined your selection is going to be. So you can see how that went a little fuzzy on me. That is not helpful. We do not like the fuzz. And so we are going to come in. I'm going to sculpt it out so we've got a nice line. But don't panic yet because this is a nice, clean look right now. But we don't always want nice, clean looks, do we? We actually are going to want to mess this up a little bit because of perception, that depth perception that we were working on. And... We're going to have to blur this a little bit because where's our focus in this image? Let's take a look. Let me put a, a little layer up here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Where is my focus? Is my focus here on my island? If it is, that means everything in my foreground is going to be blurred. It is not. That is not where I want my focus to be. And so what I'm going to have to do is note where my focus is. It's going to be on my model. It's going to be on where my model is standing. My focus line is right here where she is. It is not back here. It's not at my ledge. It's not on my mountains. It's not on my island. It is on my model. And everything on that same plane with her is going to be in focus. So there will be a sharp line of focus right here in my image. And it's not going to be anywhere else because hold your finger up in front of you. If you are... Focus on your finger and your finger is close to you. The things in the background 
they're going to be fuzzy. If you hold your finger up and you are looking at things in the background, your finger is going to be fuzzy, isn't it? This is how you can kind of figure out our focus here. So it's uh, it's an interesting thing, and you got to pay attention to it in book covers because people don't do that. And that is what one of the big things that makes book covers unbelievable. Yentl says she can hear me. Yay, I'm so glad you can hear me. All right. So I'm going to want to play with this a little bit. I, I actually don't want this coloring for my castle. So what am I going to do? Well, I think I'm going to grab my selection tool here. And I'm just going to grab part of that. And I'm going to grab the curves level. Now, I don't know if you actually, I'm going to check. Can you see this? <gasps> no, you can't see my curves level. Sad day. Oh, maybe because I clicked off. Yep, it's because I clicked off. Okay, well, I don't know if you can see my curves level, if there's a little box there. Oh, dang it. Hang tight. I got to reselect that. This is what happens when I don't have multiple computers running. <laughs> All right, here's my curves level. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to play with my different channels. So, what do I want? I can play with my level, and that's going to make it a little more yellow. It's going to make it a little more cool toned, which I'm going to play with later anyway. Um, let me play with my greens. Oh, okay. So now we're bringing it down into more of the reds and magentas. Ooh, and the very greens. We don't, we don't want the very greens. So let's see. I'm playing with my red channel now, and that makes it really bright. Makes it really green. What do I want? Go back to my greens. Let me bring this down more into almost like a red ish. And then we're just going to play with some of this coloring here. And I'm just playing with it now. Now I'm just being weird. Just run with me. Run with me here. That's not bad. Let's take a look at the difference there. We've got that red tone from that greenish tone, and I like that a lot better. So now I'm going to go and zoom back in on this. And up we go. And I'm going to grab my white brush, and I'm going to start painting that on. But I'm going to stay away from the green tones because I don't want those affected by this red curves level that we have because it's not going to be affecting the green. And this, I'm just going to clip that right to that image so that it doesn't get on my other coloring. Pretty neat, right? Pretty neat. Okay. So now at this point, let me zoom back out and see where we're at. That's pretty neat. So, my next step is going to be to add in a couple of other things. Let me check my chat box real quick. Sissy made it. You just finished dying, but you made it. I'm going to assume that this was some exercise program that you were working with and it nearly killed you. Otherwise, let me know. We're creating a fantasy scape here. It's really cool. We just made a floating island, but we're not done with it yet. Uh, let me see. Yes. Okay. So I'm actually going to... Put my floating island into a folder. And you know what? Let me name this. We try to name things so that we know what we're looking at. Floating island. And I'm going to duplicate my island because I don't want to mess it up. And I am actually going to merge that group so that it is one solid image. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to go up to filter, to blur, to Gaussian blur. And we're going to start tweaking the perception. Now, obviously, that was a lot. <laughs> we need to pull that way back. But you can see how it's going from very refined to a little blurrier, a little blurrier. And then we can go, like, massively blurry and, like, exceptionally massively blurry. We don't want it massively blurry. We just want to make sure we take out some of that detail because it is going to be in the distance. There we go. There we go. Now, now look at the difference here. We've got fine detail and we've got that blur. And that is what we're looking for in this. Perfect. All right. Let me grab my next little trick that I've got up my sleeve. 
we are going to be adding a little bit more to our air, which is going to be awesome. And I am scrolling through all 300 some of my photos to find the one I'm looking for, which of course is down by the bottom. Let me grab some water real quick. Awesome. Okay, I am looking for something that we are going to put in the top in the air on this image. And I think, I think I need, which one is it? Oh, that could work. Check this out, guys. You ready for this? I'm dropping a new image. Boom, we are talking about hot air balloons. So I'm looking at the red one on the right side of my screen. I'm gonna come up in here and select it with my selection tool. I'm gonna select the basket and I'm not gonna be able to select the ropes. That's just something that's not gonna happen. Boom, check that you guys. And is this gonna work the way I wanted it to? It is, well, a little bit, it kind of works. Let me see if I can. Nope, I don't like this one. All right, so we are going to get rid of this one, look for one at a different angle, because I was thinking I could be up close, but because it's so up close, it's not working. So let's try this one. Now, I am not leaving it this color, so I want you to be thinking and pop in the chat box right now and tell me what color should I be making this hot air balloon? Blues, purples, what colors do we want? Like a grayish color? What What is kind of fantasy steampunkish for us? Sound off in my comments and let me know what you guys are thinking. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so now I need to go in and refine this. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm gonna grab my brush tool again on black and I am going to refine this edge. And get rid of some of the extra stuff that we do not need. It obviously picked up some of the building in the background. Uh, it took away part of my basket, which is not helpful to me. So we're just gonna refine that. Just a little bit. And again, if you need the opposite, so if, if you're on a black brush, it takes away. If you're on a white brush, it adds it back in. And if you just need to easily switch back and forth, just hit the X button on your keyboard. And that will swap that for you. So I'm refining my line here. Painting in a little bit more of that basket. I'm going to fix up the handle of this. Handle? The edge? The rim? What do we call this? I don't know what we call this. Okay, we are refining that, taking away some of that coloring that we don't need. We're gonna go up to the air balloon. Obviously, we're gonna need to do some work here because there was a lot of stuff going on in that background and it did not give me a nice clean edge. So I'm on a small brush on black and I am just refining my edge here. So sound off in those comments. Let me know what color I should make this. Thinking maybe like a brownish color, although we do have a lot of blue tones. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you think would look cool. And remember, I have to color tone this when I'm done because our background doesn't match our island or our island doesn't match our background. We've got some haze that we have to handle. Gotta do some tweaking, it's gonna be cool. So we are refining this edge here, all the way down the side. I know you guys can't see my brush. I wish you could see my brush because it helps to know where I'm working. <laughs> but you get the basic idea. Okay, so now I've got my basket handle and my balloon handle. I'm gonna add another layer. I'm gonna grab a brush and I'm actually going to switch to a hard brush and I'm going to pick like a brownish color. What? No. Let's refine that a bit. Oh, nope. 
And I'm just painting on some of these ropes. Close enough is what we will call that. And then I'm going to refine that just a little bit. There we go. <laughs> oh, fun time. Might have to work on those ropes a little bit. So let me call this my balloon. And I'm going to pop in to my chat box. Bluish green, purple, yellow. Balloons, great idea. Yes. Mm, okay. Let's find out what color is going to look good on this. And I'm thinking we'll play with our curves level. So let me just grab my balloon here. I grab my selection tool, I click selection tool, and it's being a pain, so let's try it this way. Sometimes you have to be on the exact layer for it to cooperate. And it's going to grab the basic shape of my balloon. Almost there. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to add a new layer. Oh, that was not what I was doing. Whatevs, whatevs. Let's grab like a tealish color and let's paint over it. So when I'm not in my curves, I made a new layer. And oops, I forgot to change my brush. Back to my soft brush. And as you can see, I painted over it. Then I'm gonna change my blend mode. So I'm gonna try a couple of different ones. First one I'm gonna try is hue. Ooh, pretty. And we're gonna play with color. No oh, hue is better. I'm going to play with soft light. New. So let's go back to hue. And let me back down my opacity. Whoa, whoa. Hello. I think we have a winner. Check that out. That worked pretty nicely, didn't it? I love that. That's awesome. I don't even have to play with that. That's like awesome. Cool these guys. I am. Oh, I like that better. I just lowered the opacity on the ropes that I made on that hot air balloon, and that looks a lot better. That's a lot better. Okay. So now our next step is going to be to adjust the visibility of my balloon. Because, again, we're talking depth perception, so I just put that in a folder, duplicated my folder, merging my group. Duplicating that, turning the first one off, and then I'm going to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to wait for my little panel to pop up for me. And I'm just going to change how much of that I can see. Ta da! And let me put that back up there so you can see how we went. A little more, a little less refined there. Cool. Now at this point, I need to get my model back up to the top layer so that I'm not affecting her. And I'm going to select a color. So I'm picking my color selector tool. And I grabbed one of the blues from the mountains in the background. And I'm adding a new layer. And I'm grabbing my brush. And I'm just going to kind of paint over this stuff here. And then I'm going to probably just back my opacity down. I'll paint over that a little bit. Yes. I'm going to add just a little bit more there. And what I'm doing now is I'm just tapping with my color around my objects. And I'm making them. Just a little more blurry. I'm going to put my layer mask over that, put it on black, lower my opacity, and tap off so that I don't have this like weird halo effect on this because I only want it on part of this image. Yes. Awesome. Okay, let me check in with my chat box, see how things are going. Awesome. Awesome. What do you guys think and how are we feeling about this so far? I am about to do a little bit of depth perception work, I think. 
the first. I want to go back down to the beginning where I had this really cool stalag type type thing. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to drag this baby up to the top top and I'm going to add it back in. Now I'm going to do some movement and adjusting and doing stuff with it. But actually, I think I might like it better the other way. Yep. Let me just flip this around. So I'm going to flip this 180 just to see how this kind of looks and kind of works. And it's kind of a cool little thing here. Oh, no, I don't like how that moved. Let me step back. Because I kind of really like that. I think I do. So now, now that I've got that there, let me refine this just a touch. Because it kind of gives this really cool perception to it. And it adds stuff in the foreground. And I love having stuff in the foreground. Um, because it just, it makes a lot of sense. That stuff would be in the foreground of an image because it, otherwise it's just so clean. We don't like things that are super clean. So we're going to tweak that just a little bit. Happiness. Let me grab my spot heel. I'm going to click back over to the actual layer. And I'm going to get rid of that grass there. Eh, nope, it doesn't want to play nice. So I'm actually going to grab my clone tool. And I'm going to raise my opacity. And I'm going to sample from different locations. And just kind of tap it in here. To get rid of some of that green. There we go. Okay, so now that I have that handled, I actually have to go back in and I'm gonna have to move where some of my stuff is located. So, let me move my balloon. Let me find my floating island. And we're just moving stuff around until we're happy with where it's located. <laughs> I see what I'm doing. Yeah. There we go. Hello. We like this. Okay, let me move my balloon down just a touch. And let me move my floating island down. I actually want to make that a touch smaller. And I'm going to straighten that just a little bit because now that it's in this location, we have to move that. There we go. And I actually want to blur that just a little bit more. So let me go to blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to pump that up just a little bit. There we go. Awesome. Now, if you were looking at that stalactite, stalagmite, which, which is the one that comes down from the top? I don't remember. But I'm looking at the coloring here, and I do not like this color. So we are going to be doing a little bit of color adjusting. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool, and I'm just going to grab a shape. It's all good. Grab a shape. And I'm going to go into my curves level. And I think I'm going to hit my reds first. And I can pull it down. It doesn't do me much good. Oh, I see what's happening. I'm in the wrong place. My bad, guys. Go back up to the top. Let me grab my selection tool again. There we go. Now let me grab my curves level. Okay. In my reds channel, I can go down, and it will take out some of those reds, or really bump up my reds. In my greens, I can actually add in some of those red, pink, magenta -y colors, or pull it more to a yellowy color. In my blues, I can... Kind of add in some of those yellowy colors or take them away, which I kind of like. I like that more for sure. Then I want to play with. Yes. Um, and I'm using all the different channels, and you can actually use them all in combination or. Nope, don't like that. Or you can use them individually to kind of change what you're doing. So I painted that on just in part of that. 
but I have to go back in and I actually have to add it to the rest of this, which we're going to add right there. And as you can see, I went off a little bit and that has that weird blue tone, which we don't like. So I'm actually going to just clip that to that layer and it gets rid of the rest of it. Yes, that is so much better. And I actually think, I actually think I might want to make that darker, but not like that. <laughs> There we go. What? No, don't be like that. Step back and step back and step back. And one more step back. There we go. Okay, let me put that into a folder and then drop down, we'll call this. And don't yell at me. There we go. Duplicate. Merge group, duplicate, multiply, and then step back. All right, let me check in with my chat box. Stalactites are from the ceiling, fun fact. Yes, I never know. Stalactites, stalagmites. I learned it in school. Heck, I taught it in school. I don't remember. I always thought they were so cool, though. Has anybody ever been to, like, a cave where they have those? I always love going into these places and looking at these things. I think it's really cool. So I'm refining my edge here just a touch. And remember, where is this located? Is this on the same plane as my model? The answer to that is no. No, it is not. And so we're going to have to change our depth perception on this. So, let me duplicate that, turn that one off. I'm going to merge my group. And then I'm going to blur this. I just realized I got really quiet. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm losing my voice here. I've been talking all morning. Okay, so now I'm in my Gaussian blur. Ooh, and I am just playing with my blur level. I almost liked it really intense there. Yep, we're gonna run with that. Yes, we are. And I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit because it took away part of my shape. I don't really like. So we're just changing that just a touch. There we go. Sweetness. Okay, how are we feeling? What do we think this needs? Other than to really ground some of this. Let me, oh, you know what I need to do? <laughs> I need to do what we call saving. Because <laughs> I haven't saved any of this yet. So let me just real quick save this. It's gonna take a second for this to actually process. And while we're doing that, let me check in with the chat box. Uh, mites are like ant hills. That's how you remember. Okay, works for me. Works for me. Okay, so we are saving. Currently, ninety six percent saving. Taking just a minute for this to finish the whole saving process. All right. So let me see. The next thing I need to do is really deal with my horizon line. So I'm going to go down in my layers. And I'm gonna find my drop off point. Okay, so here we go. Let me turn off this layer for you. Boom, boom. Ha, huh, that's kind of interesting. Okay, I'm gonna add a new layer. And I am going to call this Horizon Darkening. Boom, that sounds like a good title. Guys, be thinking of a book title for this. Yes. You want to change your color to gray, change your mode to soft light, and then click fill with soft light neutral color 50% gray. Click OK. We are then going to grab our burn tool. And we're going to start the darkening process. Now, this is because we need a very specific 
line here for our drop off point. And I'm actually going to have to clean that up just a touch. So I jumped over to my horizon line. And I'm cleaning this up because I want that very specific edge there. And we're just refining that just a bit. There we go. Awesome. Yes, all right. Woohoo, I'm seeing something really cool that I kind of want to try. And I don't know if it's going to work. I may have to play with that later because I don't want to hold you guys like forever. Uh, I do need to take care of some of my coloring, though. So, I'm adding a new layer. I'm going to grab that bluish color. And we are going to have a soft brush on a big, uh, big brush size. And we're just going to start tapping. And I want another layer. And I'm going to grab a white. And I'm just tapping around my island, no, nope. tapping around my island, tapping around my castle. Not there. Sometimes you, you uh, look at things, and you're like, yes, tap there. And the answer is no, don't tap there. <laughs> All right. That kind of works. That kind of works for me right now. I can live with that. And then I want to add a secondary layer, and I'm just going to add a little bit of fog here and there. I'm still on that super low opacity. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Bring some of the fog up here. Now we're talking. So we're just bringing up a little fog on the thing here. And then I'm going to tap off just a touch. So I put a layer mask on there. And I'm on a black layer mask. That was not what I wanted to do. Go back. Bring my opacity down way low. There we go. Sweetness. Okay, so it kind of almost looks like this cool little waterfall. It's going down over the edge, down the mountains. This is really cool. All right, so now I need to ground this baby. So let me check in with my chat box. Awesome, you guys are still here hanging out with me. I appreciate you here hanging out with me. And I'm going to look for my textures. And I'm going to grab a texture. And I'm going to drag and drop here. Boom. And then I'm going to grab my blend mode. And I'm going to go down to uh, Divide. Is that the one I usually use? Difference. There we go. All right, so now we've got this, like, painterly look here, but it makes for some really intense colors. So I need to back up my opacity. Like, really back off my opacity. And then check, check out the difference there. It kind of grounds it. But I'm definitely not done yet because this is looking really very clean to me. And I don't do that. So <laughs> let me find some other textures because we're not limited to just one. We can do all sorts of fun things. Let's just see how this one looks. I'm going to make this big. And we're going to maybe use soft light. And maybe back that off a bit. Maybe I don't want soft light. Maybe I want... Yeah. That does make it rather dark. Maybe that's not the one I want. 
Let's try a different texture. Let me see if I can get one that's a little more gravelly. What do I have here? Let's try this. FYI, I'm looking these, uh, looking at these in a thumbnail size, so <laughs> I don't know what they look like until I drop them. Okay, let's try. Let's try screen. Let's try soft light. Okay, now we're gonna back up my opacity. If you can hear that, that is my puppy dog upstairs. She uh, obviously hears me and wants to come play. Meh. Okay, we're gonna try something different in a minute, but I want to do something kind of interesting. And I know I'm I'm getting close to my time here, so we're gonna have to step this up a little bit. But I got some different uh, pieces to make this a little more steampunk-like. So I grabbed things like clocks, I grabbed things like cogs and gears and a uh, little sprockety type things, and we're gonna try to piece this together and change a little bit of what my model looks like. So there we go. I have a clock that I really liked. I drag and drop that here. No, no. Okay, I see what you're doing. I see. I'm gonna move this over to the center here. And I have to bring this down under my texture. And I'm gonna zoom in. Let's go with 40%. So now we're just gonna start to build a costume. And if you hang out with me, <laughs> you know I build costumes a lot. Uh, a lot of what I do, I, I build by hand. I actually create some really cool costumes that my models wear. Really, are you really gonna be like that? Fine. Okay. I, I build a lot of the costumes that my models wear, but I also build things in Photoshop and people have no idea and it's really kind of cool. And so when I don't have something, I can actually make it right in Photoshop. And I have definitely been known to create some dresses in Photoshop. I have built dresses out of leaves. I think I have a butterfly one somewhere. I have like massive, like really big ball gownish type things that you could never function in in real life that I built in Photoshop and they're totally believable. It's really awesome. This was uh, not super cooperating with me, so I am piecing this out by hand, which is a royal pain and not something I would ordinarily do. I am trying to move this along. So run with me here as I piece this out a little bit. And I'm just going around the clock. I'm, I'm not being super specific right now because I'm going to be adding a lot in. Um, there's a lot of detail here. So if I were doing this for real, if I was doing this for like a client or for like a gallery piece, I would actually pay attention to this and really do this for real. But I'm out of time crunch. And so you guys just get to deal with me kind of playing with it. Okay. We're just going to say it's close enough, even though it's like really not. Uh, no, it's really not. This is bothering me. <laughs> Sometimes I get on these live broadcasts and I'm like, I need to fix it. It needs to look right, but I don't have the time. And oh, it just bothers me to no end. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a clock. And I'm going to rotate this just a touch because she is not straight up and down. She's got that slight bend. There we go. Oh, that's my baby. She's upset. My puppy dog is upstairs. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's not happy. <laughs> okay. Let me grab some extra cogs here. Oops. I, yep, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, oh, you know what could be cool? <gasps> OMG. OMG, should I change and make these wings? 
Oh, heck to the yes, guys. Heck to the yes. And again, apologies that Jada is an upset puppy dog right now. So I flip that horizontal. Oh, you guys. You guys. This is cool. Okay, and then I'm going to need to put the clock above it. And I'm going to actually make it bigger. I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to tip the one a little bit sideways. Actually, I didn't want to do that. Let me go back. And I'm going to take both of them. Nope. That one. And I'm just going to rotate that just a touch. What do you guys think? Do we like this? Because I think I like this. And that totally just like worked together. I didn't even have to like, look at that. Look at how easy that just made it on me. I'm going to come in here and kind of fix up that foot just a little bit. There we go. That's better. And now I feel the need to change the hat color. Uh, let me check in with my chat box here, guys. What are we thinking? Pretty, yes. Yes, we like that. Sweetness. I definitely need to change my hat color. So I'm going to pick a, my color selector tool. Now I'm going to go back up to my gears. There we go. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush. I'm going to grab a new layer. And I'm just going to paint over this hat here. And as you can see, it's just putting the normal layer of paint on this. And I'm going to change my blend mode in just a second. And I'm going to try, I think I'm going to use hue first, but I, yeah, color's going to work better for me. There we go. And let me back that up just a touch. And then we'll find that edge just a little bit. Look at that. Look at how cool that is, you guys. OMG. Let me put just a little bit of color in some of this and just kind of see how that looks. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I am going to go into my layer with the girl on it because there's one strand of hair. That, whoops, wrong way. One strand of hair that is down the back of her neck. I'm going to grab my spot heel tool, and I'm just going to get rid of this. And fix that up just a touch. There we go. And because it did a little weird thing on me, I'm going to grab my clone. And just tap that. There we go. Beautiful. Now, what do I want to do? I want to do this just a little bit, I think. And I'm going to need to find my clock layer. Where is my clock? That is not my clock. This is my clock. And I got to get in here and just tweak that just a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. And there's some stuff around the outside edge of this that I do not like. There are words there. And I hate words. So we're going to take the spot heel and we're going to remove them. And I don't need to do a hugely perfect job because this is all rusted and you can't tell anyway. Sometimes we find these fun little cheats and it's amazing. So we're just going to tweak, tweak, tweak. All right, guys, at this point, I am just about wrapping up here. I need title suggestions. Not only do I need title suggestions, but I'm going to need tagline and fake write-up stuff, which I can kind of do the fake write-up stuff, but I definitely need a title and a tagline. Okay, that's cleaned up. Sweetness. Now, because I don't want this to be identical, identical, I'm actually going to go in on one side of the wings or the other, and I'm going to do some changing. 
Mm-hmm, I hear you. So, I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to clean up some of these rust spots. I'm going to change some of this just a little bit, and then I'm going to do a little bit of cloning. Because I do not want this to be the exact same as the other side. So maybe, maybe, what do I want? I'm going to grab my clone tool. And I'm just going to select different areas and kind of paint in different places. Just so things are changed up and a little bit unique. So we don't ever like things to be identical. Identical because when things are identical, they are unbelievable. And our goal here with all of this is to make sure that whatever world we are creating, it is super, super believable. So that just means we play with it a little bit and we change and redefine what we're doing and we change the little marks. And then I'm going to pick my color selection tool. And I'm just going to change some of my coloring. So I have, I picked a color. And I'm just going to paint it on a new layer. A different color. In the different areas. And this is obviously a little bright, so I'm going to back that down just a little bit. And I'm just painting in different areas. Now, I don't want to do all the same. Remember, we are not doing things all the same. So I pick different colors from different areas. And I just brush them in unique locations. And we change things up. We make it kind of cool looking. We take away things in different areas. So now, let me back up just a little bit. And just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so as I'm looking at this, what looks the same and what looks different? Where do I need to change things? Where do I need to add things? Well, let's find out. Let's see. This color needs to be changed right here. Because that is kind of the same. That needs to be changed. Oh, that's good. Um, definitely want to go dark there. So let me grab some of that. Sweet. And I don't have to be limited to the one. I can change other things, too. Nice. Okay. That is what we call awesome, I do believe. <laughs> Let me get just a little bit up here. Yeah, that actually looks funny. All right. Okay, guys, in just a second, I am coming to you for titles. All right, I can live with that. I can live with that. Let me see, do I have one or two? Maybe just, let me grab this. Pop that up here. And I am going to grab my magic wand tool, which is about to make my life so much easier. I love the magic wand tool when you have specific colors. The magic wand tool uh, selects a color range as long as it's connected. And so I'm just tapping what I want to get rid of. Oh, don't even. I'm going to inverse my selection. And boom. Cog cut out. And I'm going to make it really small. And we're going to go in here. And we obviously have to fix those lines around the edge there. It didn't want to play nice with me. And I'm just adding in a couple of details. 
I'm going to duplicate that because I am going to warp that baby. Actually, I think I have to convert it to a smart object. Yes, I do. Boom. Okay. So I am just warping this a little bit and placing things in different locations. But I kind of have some extra designs hanging out with me. And so I'm going to transform. I'm going to go to skew. And it fits into different locations. And then we just have to change how dark it is. So we're playing with our multiply layer. Boom. The one in the shadow there, it's going to be a little bit darker. <clears throat> the one that's a little bit more in the light, we do want it a little bit darker, but not quite as dark. And I'm going to put a layer mask over it and actually brush it off part of it because part of that's going to be in shadow and part of it is not. Interesting, right? Boom. So we've added a couple of extra little cogs there. Kind of interesting. I'm excited. There's one more thing. Let me look and see if I can find that. There was. I think it's down toward the bottom. Yes. Ah, uh, you know what? Let me grab. Let me grab this one. Okay, so I've got a couple of cogs there. Forty. Bring that in. Let me just see if it's going to easily select that for me. It's not. Fine, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Maybe I won't worry about it. All right. Boom. Okay. So I'm definitely going to add a little bit of noise in here. Gosh, maybe do I want to pull it up? Yeah. And then I'm, whoa, baby, what just happened? It inverted it on me. If it ever happens to you like that and inverts, just hit command I and it will go away. So I wanted my texture just a little bit darker on part of it. And so I'm brushing it off of certain places that I don't want it to be on as dark. And I'm just tapping. This is the benefit of using a Wacom tablet because you can just tap it off and it makes life awesome. I definitely need to add some dust here. Okay. Let me see. What do I want to do? I want to just a little bit right there. Right there. And we're going to go to filter, down to noise, add to, or add, um, yes, yes, I know. I'm actually going to have to select everything, duplicate it bring it down, and merge those layers. And then it will let me add my noise. Let's see what that one's going to do. Mm. Let me see. Let's duplicate that. Go back down to my filter, I'm on the wrong one. Noise, add noise. There we go. So now that looks a little bit better, I'm thinking. Let me brush on. Oh, I see. Yep, that works. Okay. Voila, we've created a world. Uh, and I would actually change a little bit of that to 
kind of have a darker edge around this, but I'm going to actually be moving this soon. So as soon as it's done saving, we will actually be exporting this. And we are going to turn it into a book cover. So people who are still here hanging out with me, I need some names, titles, come up with something for me. Connie's not here. Connie's usually our go-to girl for titles. Okay, so that's saved. I'm going to save this as an actual image. It's going to be a huge file. Go down. Nah, that's fine. Oh, you know what this could use? I almost think before I do that, let me look for some birds. Uh, I have some birds I can overlay here. I think will actually look pretty nice. But we gotta wait for it to pop up. So we're just kind of waiting as it pops up. There's that. Oh, I see what I can do too. Okay, that one's there. Here is the folder. Yeah are the birds. And I'm just reducing our opacity a bit. That looks pretty cool. You know what I almost want to do? I'm never going to finish with this image. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I keep finding stuff. There, that's what I wanted. This is the uh, photographer's curse here because we just keep finding things we want to add to our images. We're never done with them. We just work and work and work and keep finding things that we could be doing. I don't know if I like that. Let me see if I can make that darker. And then I will come in. And just tweak that there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then we have to take the roots off of the actual mountain here. Okay, close enough. Somebody tell me I'm done. I need to be done. Okay. So then I would just add my outside edge. I'm going to ground this a little bit. Go down to my color gray mode soft light. Fill with neutral. Have a big burn brush. And just kind of sweep around. Part of the outside, but not all the outside. There we go. Okay, there we go. I'm happy now. So let me save this as an actual image. Yes, I want to replace that. Thank you. Saving as the image, and then I will save the actual file. We're going to jump over to our book cover now. So this is the one we made last time. Woohoo! Here we go. You're going to get rid of that, and we're going to add in our image, which I have to find in my file. Uh-oh, where did I save that? <laughs> I'm waiting for it to finish rendering. Yep, might not have saved that in the right place, Katie. Let me see what file I saved that in. Don't y'all. Ugh, okay. Hang tight, guys. Oh, it might be in the main file, because that would be smart. Let me just see if I... Nope, it's not... There it is. It is there. Sweetness. Okay. Here we go. 
So we have our image here, and obviously it's going to start cutting things off in weird locations, which we don't really want to do. So how are we going to change this? Well, we can either extend our background, or we can find kind of a new way of doing this. So let's just see where, where do we want this? If I tuck that kind of in the corner here and adjust it so that it's right along our edge. There we go. That's not bad. Okay, let's do this, people. What we're going to do is kind of extend our background just a little bit, but not in the way that I would ordinarily do it. So let me find my textures file. Here we go. And I wanna find something that's a little bit rock-like. So let me go into stuff from maybe the castles. Uh, nope, not that one. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if I've got that here. I bet you it's in that file. I think I can use that. Oh, I know what I can do. Grab that little ant hill type thing. And we're going to make it big. And we're going to make this big because we want that texture. So I'm just going to put that right there. And I'm going to bring it under my image. And then I'm going to grab my clone tool. And I am going to make it fairly big because I am like legitimately filling this out here. And I'm just going to start cloning things in. So I legitimately just want to create this background, which we're then going to play with momentarily. And so I'm just filming this in right now. And I'm grabbing from different areas so that it looks like it's unique. So if you actually clone something, you can tell because there's duplicate trees, there's duplicate grass, there's duplicate leaves on the ground, and it looks weird and it looks fake. But if you grab from different locations, then you are going to get different samples, and it kind of has that illusion that it actually belongs where you're putting it, and it is not something that you created by hand. And so I'm just doing a real hack job of this right now because I'm not intending on keeping most of this, but I'm just kind of showing you what's what. And there we go. Close enough. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that was a really weird sound that I just heard from somewhere in my house. <laughs> okay. So now I need to work on my color toning. I'm going to make this darker. And then I'm going to color sample from like there. I'm going to grab a layer and I'm going to paint on my color. And this is just to get rid of that red because we took out all that red. We don't need reds. That's not the coloring we're going for on this. Oh, I know what I should have done. I'll do it on my cover. I didn't uh, do my curves layer, which is probably why I was a little bit of a clean look on there. I wasn't super happy with that. So we'll tweak that. It's all good. So it's very slowly adding my color because I am live broadcasting as I'm doing this and it makes things a little bit on the slow side. And I'm going to go down to probably color. And close enough. Okay. So, at this point, the next thing I need to do is actually get in there and make this actually work together. So, I'm going to put a layer mask over that. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And we're going to get rid of this nasty little line there. So, I'm on my layer mask. I've got a soft brush on a high opacity. 
and I'm just starting to flick away at that line. See how that's kind of disappearing? So then I need to do a little bit of blurring here to kind of blend that in a little bit more. And obviously this line looks weird. We're going to have to fix it, but we're going to get to that in a minute. So what do I need to do? I need to turn that into group duplicate. I'm going to merge my group together. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to go to filter, blur, down the Gaussian. And I am going to make sure that that is blurred, baby. And I want to make sure it's just about the same level as the little stalag type. And close enough. So I'm going to accept that. I'm going to put a layer mask over it as soon as it's done rastercizing that. There we go. And then I'm going to invert. At that point, I'm going to grab a white brush. And I'm just going to tap some of that blurriness into this. And then there's going to be some coloring things that I will be working on momentarily. So I want to make sure I'm getting all those pretty colors in there. Let me see. So I'm just selecting some colors and I'm going to add a layer. My computer's getting really mad. <laughs> really mad at me right now. And we're going to select color. I'm going to add some of those colors. There's a lot of green tones in there. Oh, I love that. So we're just going to add some of those. Whoops, not that high though. Not that high. Let me get a different layer so I can adjust that. And I'm just tapping randomly. And then I'm pulling back. Guys, come on now. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? Somebody tell me that's really cool. Let me check my chat box. Time itself is threatened. Can it be unsaved? I don't know. Done, done, done. Yay, titles. The Lost Isle of Time. Keep going. I'm, I'm liking these. Keep Keep going, give me all sorts of fun things. I need to clean up my line here. And so I'm going to zoom in a bit. And we've got this vicious little line here, which we do not like. I'm going to take my clone tool, I'm gonna say. And I'm just going to do away with some of this line. And I'm just kind of following the natural curve of that a little bit. And as you can see, that's not always gonna work, but it's a basic idea here. And I'm just filling it in and I'm sampling from different areas because remember, we need it to blend. We need it to look natural. So if you look over here, I ended up with a lighter color blue on top of a darker color blue, and that just didn't vibe. So I had to go in and I had to fix that. So I'm adding in some blues and sampling. Every time I lift my my editing pen up, I'm sampling from a different area. And if you are doing Photoshop right now, you're just clicking Option, and it's sampling from a new area. Then I'm going to grab some from the rock, and I'm just, nope, because that's not how that works. Boo. <laughs> I'm going to grab my black brush, and I'm just going to tweak my line yet again. Boom. 
that out. Okay, let me pull back. And now, my friends, we have the beginnings of a book cover. Okay, let me save this. Let's do the title. Let's do this. I am going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. Right now, I'm just changing the things that I had from the last one. Oh, well, wouldn't that have been helpful, Katie? <laughs> okay, coming to my chat box. Mistress of Time. Keeper of Time has gone missing, and the Isle of Time itself is being threatened. Interesting. Let's play with it. Let's play with it. All right. We're going to call this Mistress of Time. And what do I need to do? I need to get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let me get from my best-selling author stuff. We're going to put that up top, I think. Ooh, I got an extra one. We got a tag along here, guys. From best-selling author. And then I need to find... There we go. All right, let's play. I'm going to grab my font tool, my text tool, and I'm going to tap and paste. And let's go with, nope, we're going to have to do a different color so that it actually stands out. Now, as you can see, if you look behind some of those letters, it's actually really hard to see it. So after I finish my font, I'm going to go in and I'm going to tweak the background so that you can see behind like best-selling author. That's going to need to be fixed. I think we need a different font. So let's take a look at our different fonts. Um, and I'm just going to start going through some of the different font things that I have. Now remember, as you are creating fonts for books, you've got to make sure that they're legible People can read them, so nothing too scripty, nothing too swirly. Um, hmm. And typically, when I would do a, a book cover, I would come up with a custom font or I would tweak a font that exists because it always looks better. And then you, then you have a custom font to use, which is really cool. However, I'm not taking the time to do that for this, so I'm just scrolling through all of my fonts. It's taking a very long time. That's interesting. See, that is a little bit too swirly, so we really can't use anything that's too crazy swirly. So I'm going down, and I'm looking through my fonts. And I might have to Change some of this. Hmm. Still thinking, still thinking on this. Mistress of and let's get time. And sometimes we play with different fonts. Sometimes we can play with um, different types of fonts to kind of give it an interesting look. Why didn't you say that? It changed on me. Mm. Okay, sure, why not? Mistress of time. And we just play with the locations. Nah. 
Oh, this would be cool if I had like a little swirly thing. Let me just, let me just see what I can do. I'm gonna grab a brush. Nope, I'm gonna grab a brush. I'm gonna put it on a harder level on that one. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And duplicate, rotate. Sure, why not? We'll play with it. All right, so then I'm going to grab my harder brush and nope. I'm just playing with this now. At this point, we're just gonna see what happens. Nope, don't like that. Whatever, it's fine, it's all good. Let's play with our, let's play with our layer style. So I'm gonna pull up my layers panel and get to my blending options. Uh, let me know if you can see my control panel right now because this is kind of a cool thing to see. And I'm going to, gosh, that's a terrible location for this. I want to contour this and maybe add some texture. And can we go over to, there we go. And I'm just going to play with how this is contoured. That's actually pretty good. And then I'm going to do a drop shadow. Yes, we like the drop shadow. That is super helpful, actually. And then, do I like that? I might like that. And glow, let me see. And I'm going to just tweak that just a touch. And then, here's a cool fun fact for those of you who are Photoshopping with me. If you like the effect, you can add it to all of the others just by clicking Control and dragging the FX to it actually yeah i like that that's cool so then let me grab my tagline and we will add in a little tagline over here and this is gonna have to be not that font <laughs> um, let me just grab a simple one. There we go. And we're going to shrink this down. Keeper of time, it's gone missing. The Isle of Time itself is being threatened. I almost think I want to adjust that to the left. Sure, why not? What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know what we're thinking. I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to merge the layers. And what I want to do, I might actually want to do a little dodging and burning. So, let's call this burn. We're going to have our gray down to soft lights, filled with neutral, and then we are going to go to town on the burning here. And we are going to take this down so that we've got. A lot of contouring right here. And then I still am going to have to do a little bit of work, so I'm going to add a new layer and I'm just going to grab my gradient tool. I'm going to grab like a black color and I'm just going to come in here. Whoa, wrong setting. We want the radial one instead of the line one. And then I'm just coming behind my letters and I am darkening stuff up.
And as we're doing this, we're going to need to handle the spine as well. Because we can't just let the spine be blank. So we're going to take our title. And we're going to put that over on the spine as well. Obviously, we're going to have to do some legit work here. Um, do not like that one. That needs to change. So there's part of this that's a little bit blurred that I don't like the way it looks. So I'm going to be taking pieces from different areas and filling it in to make me happier. Because that is the beauty of being in control. You <laughs> make yourself happier. What is happening here? Hmm. Interesting. Okay, Mistress of Time. Let me see, where did that go? Here we go. Uh, mistress. Copy that. And we're going to turn that one 180. Nope, not 180. Katie, we wanted one, or we wanted 90. Yikes. Clockwise, 90. Thank you. We've got mistress. We're gonna grab of and our two little swirlies. So we duplicate that. And we're gonna rotate that, go by going to transform 90 degrees clockwise. And we're going to reduce the size of that. And we're probably going to have to change where that one was. We'll get there. And we duplicated time. We're going to rotate that 90 degrees as well. And make it smaller to fit on the spine. Okay, so then at that point, I need to fix where Mistress is located. There we go. And then we will grab fake author name. And bring it down here, just like that. And then we would come up with the back of our story. So what do you guys think? Are we liking this? Is this something that's going to work for us? I see things that I'm going to need to fix. I'm definitely going to be adding some more texture to this. In fact, let me do that right now. Gotta go down below all of my, on my layers. And I'm just going to make this bigger to fit the entire thing here. Good grief, I'm getting a ton of notifications right now. Everybody wants to talk to me. Click on difference. And pull this in. Just like that. Yeah. And then I'm just going to tap off just a touch on the little wings. There we go. Okay, I can live with that. I'm gonna contour this just a touch and then we will uh, be good to go. So sound off, what do you guys think? Do we like this? Are we enjoying this? Is the book we would read? I'm contouring just around parts of the edge here. Obviously, I'm going to have to come up with a uh, fake little write up there. It's all good. I actually, you know what I want to do? Let me try one thing quick. Where is... There it is. So I'm opening up my fog overlays right now. I'm going to see if this is kind of something that's going to work for me. Slowly opening up. Here we go. And let me look for the correct fog file. Mm, yep, that's the one. So this is a fog file here, which is pretty cool. And I'm just going to stretch this out here. And I'm going to hit my blend mode to screen. Because screen 
takes away the black, which is pretty neat. And we're just gonna compress this down here. We're gonna duplicate it to make it a little bit stronger. And then we are going to print folder and paint it off. Oops, I'm on my hard brush. And ta-da. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. I think one more thing I want to do real quick. I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to grab that gradient tool one more time. Uh, and I'm going to switch back to one's a little bit more straight. And, oh, no, don't be like that. There we go. Yes. Sweetness. Oh, one more thing I want to try just to see. I'm a big fan of light. I am known for uh, my, my light manipulation. And sometimes I just see things and I'm like, I want to add a little bit of light. And it's not going to work the way I wanted it to. So goodbye to that. Boom. All right, I'm saving and... Coming back over here. Uh, pretty, I probably would want to read it as well. The fact that she has wings made of gears pulls you in. Pretty, Sissy says, well, yeah, I'd read the book. It's a pretty awesome premise. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is our look at our, our cover today. That was our fantasy landscape. Thanks for hanging out with me as I was trying to create my floating island and my hot air balloon and my little gear wings, um, which I actually think I need to make in real life because, hello. Fun fact, fun fact, there's a steampunk event in my town this weekend. Should we make this? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, check out my, my Instagram stories, though, because if people are dressed up in costume, I'm totally going to Instagram that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am Cam Robinson, a professional photographer at Cam Robinson Photography and social media marketing strategist over at KM Robinson Photography and Reading Transforms. I'm also a professional photographer, uh, no, professional author of the Golden Trilogy, which is my Goldilocks retelling. It's a young adult retelling where Goldilocks is sent on a mission to destroy the bears and my Jaded Duology, um, which is another YA dystopian Big fans of both of these areas. I hope you guys will check them out. Hey, M. Robinson. Books on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat and YouTube, which is really cool. Just so that you go to the uh, steampunk event. Oh, girl, I'm going. I'm totally going. The question is whether or not I go in costume. <laughs> I might go check it out and see, like, how many people show up in costume. And then I'll come back and dress up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Gam Robinson, author of... Golden Trilogy and the Daily Duology, photographer at Cam Robinson Photography, and social media marketing strategist at Cam Robinson Photography. And if you love this, I'm doing this every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're making a new fine art photography composite piece and a new book cover. You can check out the final version because I will be tweaking this a little bit later today. Hopefully, if all goes according to plan, and it will be up the rebroadcast and the speed edit over on my social media pages in the next couple of days. Depending on whether or not my computer cooperates and <laughs> the internet cooperates, because sometimes it takes a while to get up on YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me. If you have ideas for next week, hit up my chat box or hit up my social media because I am always taking requests. This is just something fun to do. And uh, I kind of used to educate on how to, to do composite work and educate authors in how their book covers are created and what makes really good book covers. So we you know we talked a lot today about perspective because that's one of those big things that doesn't happen a lot in book covers. So we're educating the industry. We're raising it up to a new level. I want to know what you want to see next. So tell me what you want to see next week or in future weeks. We can create really cool things. I'm also going to be doing some photo shoots for these. So uh, I actually had a request for a steampunk novel. I'm going to be doing a photo shoot for a legit steampunk cover. Uh, I just didn't happen this week. So we kind of got what we were working on today. So thanks for hanging out with me. I really enjoyed this and I cannot wait to see you next week. Make sure you sign up. Same time, same place, same link. It makes life easier, doesn't it? Livecover.readingtransforms.com. I will see you next week. 
Let me know what you want to see more of. And I'll see you over on social media. You guys have a great day. And stay inspired.